Hello, and welcome to Biomass Magazine's podcast. I'm your host, Anna Simmet. And for this episode, I have with me Brandy Johnson, Babcock and Wilcox's Chief Strategy and Technology Officer. Brandy, hello. We're so glad to have you with us today. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Absolutely. So let's just jump right into things, Brandy. Recently, Babcock released some big news. On August 7th, an agreement for General Hydrogen to purchase and transport green hydrogen made from biomass from a production facility that BNW plans to develop in Louisiana. So can you tell us more about this agreement, what it means for Babcock and General Hydrogen, and then maybe a little bit about your company's role as a clean energy technology company? Sure. So maybe I'll start with the last first and then circle back to the other question. So first, b and is a 155-year-old company. So we've constantly tried to stay at the leading edge of energy technology for our customers. Whether it was the design of the first safe water tube boiler that started our company or the supply of some of the largest boilers in the world, our groundbreaking environmental and cooling equipment and our state-of-the-art boiler cleaning and ash handling equipment, we've constantly always worked to have that next technology ready for when our customers needed it. So today is no different. We're working diligently to expand our portfolio of technologies for the energy transition as our customers work to kind of decarbonize their energy needs. So this is a great opportunity for us. So with General Hydrogen, we're pleased to have reached this agreement with them. And we're developing a project in Louisiana that will feature our novel Bright Loop hydrogen generation technology. And for B&W, what this means is we're, we're going to be deploying this Bright Loop in a project which will provide carbon negative hydrogen because it's biomass and will sequester the CO2. So it's carbon negative hydrogen, and that's going to help our customers decarbonize. And General Hydrogen is going to help us distribute that hydrogen. They've been selling hydrogen and other gases for decades, so it's not anything new for them, but this was a real opportunity for them to be able to expand their network further west. So it's a win-win for both of us. No doubt. So what is the timeline to develop this new facility, and when do you expect it might come online? So we're working through project development and the design phase of the project right now, working through all the details of that. And we expect to be making hydrogen in this unit by 2026. So that doesn't seem like too long from now. And we've got a lot of work to make that happen. Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell us more about Bright Loop? What is it and how do you use it to make hydrogen from biomass? And then what about carbon capture? Can Bright Loop also be used to isolate and sequester CO2? Yeah, so... I'm going to try to make this as simple as I can when you're listening to this, but Bright Loop Mm -hmm. is a novel chemical looping technology, and it can be designed to utilize a wide range of feedstocks and also to create a wide range of products. So the key to all of Bright Loop is the engineered Bright Loop particle that's made of iron oxide, and we think of it, it looks like a little BB is what it looks like. And that is what is looped in the process as it carries oxygen into the process and then oxygen is, it is replaced through air. So in Louisiana, we're going to be utilizing biomass as the feedstock and we're going to create hydrogen in what we call the three reactor system. So think of this as like three reactors are in series. In the first reactor, which we call the fuel reactor, This is where biomass is going to interact with the hot particle. And then, so you think about biomass and the hot particle being there and they react with each other. And what happens is as part of that reaction, you get a pure stream of CO2 that comes off with water. So we don't have to separate the CO2. We don't have to to remove it from any other gases. Just the CO2 stream comes off with water And then you can drop the water out and compress the CO2 for either usage or sequestration. And then as you go to the next reactor, the particle has been fully reduced and it goes into what we call the hydrogen reactor. And in the hydrogen reactor, we introduce steam. 
And the reaction of steam with the hot particle produces a really nice pure stream of hydrogen with water. And then that hydrogen can be used for compression and then um, used for decarbonization activities, whether that's fuel cells or using in an industry. So from the hydrogen reactor, the particle is then going to move to what we call the air reactor. An air reactor is where compressed air is introduced and that reoxygenates the particle in an exothermic reaction that reduce, it releases heat. Right. So the product from the air reactor is a concentrated stream of nitrogen. And the heat from the entire process is captured and we reutilize the heat to actually make steam. So the steam that we need to make hydrogen is made right there from the, the process of the heat. So we don't need external heat. There's not a big electricity usage or anything. So it's, it's a pretty simple process when you think about the details of it. Mm -hmm. Very well explained. So Thanks. what makes Bright Loop different or in your opinion, you know, better than other hydrogen generation methods such as electrolysis? So Bright Loop is different than really all of the other hydrogen generation technologies. First of all, we can use not only gaseous fuels like natural gas or renewable natural gas, but we can also utilize solid fuels like the biomass or even coal. The competitor technologies, if they're trying to use the uh, solid fuels, it's mostly things that look like gasification. And in those processes, they are trying to just capture the hydrogen that comes in as part of the fuel, and that's where their hydrogen comes in. Conversely, what I said about our bright loop is that the hydrogen is actually produced from the water. So that makes our hydrogen purer and easier to get to. And the other inherent difference there is that our CO2 comes off as just part of our process. So we don't need the air separation units or post-combustion capture technologies that those other solid fuel technologies need to produce the CO2 stream. And Bright Loop also has the potential when it's at full scale to produce hydrogen at a cost that meets the DOE's goals for their hydrogen shot of $1 per kilogram. So we're really excited about that. And then, you know, the hydrogen reactor is really very similar to the reactions in electrolysis, but we don't need lots of, of electricity to make it happen because the heat comes from our process in itself. So that's how we are different from the other technologies and we believe better than the other technologies. Really interesting. So why is B&W bullish on hydrogen and carbon capture? You know, do you see growing demand for these technologies in the U.S. and elsewhere around the world? So, you know, B&W has been aware of the developing hydrogen economy for decades. It's actually why we've been working on this technology like Bright Loop for, for decades, because we've seen this coming. But we believe the time is finally here where industry, the government incentives, and actually the global will is there to support clean hydrogen production and, and really to help develop the global hydrogen economy. So we're seeing activity not only in the U.S. and as part of the tax incentives from the IRA bill, for example, but we're also seeing growing demand in both Europe and Asia as there's lots of customers who are looking to uh, decarbonize their technology and really find low carbon intensity hydrogen useful in their processes. Some really exciting momentum. So final question, speaking of carbon capture, can you talk more about the importance of bioenergy with carbon capture and storage or BECS? in the clean energy transition. And then maybe tell us about what BMW is currently working on in this area. I know you have a recently announced project with Fidelis Clean Energy in West Virginia called the Mountaineer Giga System. Yeah, so BEX is exciting as well. It's another technology that we've really been working on for a long time. You know, BMW spent decades building units that utilize opportunity fuels such as wood waste for heat and power. What we see today is the combination of our Oxybrite, which is an oxygen-fired biomass unit, 
is able to enable less expensive carbon capture and sequestration because of the uh, concentrated CO2 on the back of that process. And that really enables a negative carbon intensity steam and electricity to be generated. So we see a real need for this low and negative carbon intensity power, especially to power high electrical need industries. So we are part of the Fidelis H2 Alliance, which is what was announced there at, Mount, at the Mountaineer Giga system. And as part of that process, we use the low carbon intensity electricity from a biomass fired boiler to power the hydrogen production facility. And that lowers the overall carbon intensity of the hydrogen from that process. So BNW sees many ways for us to participate in the hydrogen economy. So we're focused on working with partners and, and using all of our technologies and our toolkit to help us support that economy. Well, we sure look forward to following what you guys do, Brandy. So it's time to wrap, but it's been very interesting and informative, really exciting stuff. And I want to thank you so much for coming onto the podcast. And we sure enjoyed having you. Thank you for the time today. I appreciate it. You bet. And to our listeners, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Take care and be well. Until next time.